First of all, I'm Rain Leander. I am with Equinix Metal. Yes. And I'm a developer advocate over there. Um, I came from Red Hat. I uh, used to have Fedora on my laptop and I don't anymore. I even filled out Marie's poll. Um, it said, what, what operating system are you using or something like that? And, and basically it's become Mac OS across the board. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of sad. Uh, a friend of mine, Misk reached out and, and he said, you know, uh, there's this Fedora Women's Day, but also non-binary people are encouraged to apply as well. Uh, and would you apply? And I said, yes, I would love to. I miss Fedora. <laughs> I, I really do. Uh, I still contribute. I'm still available. I'm, I still come in, but not as much as I would like to. And that was also one of the polls is that uh, it said, how much are you contributing or would you like to contribute more? And, and I, I, other because I would like to contribute more, but also I have a lot going on. Um, so I love you all. Yes, love back. So my Fedora story is that I had a baby. <laughs> I know it's, it, it doesn't make sense. Uh, let me explain. I was with Red Hat. I live in the Netherlands. I've lived here for almost 10 years. And when I first got here, I was a technical account manager with Red Hat. And that means that from nine to five, you offer a specific phone number for uh, specific accounts to call you directly for any of their support needs. And that meant that when I had a child, which in the Netherlands means that you can go part time if you choose, that I no longer could do that job of nine to five. And so because you also can't be fired. <laughs> um, and also, I don't I don't think Red Hat. Uh, it's not the kind of company that would just fire you for for this. But basically, my job became to find a new job. And one of the things I did was I explored uh, the things I've enjoyed in the past. So coding, speaking in public. Uh, I used to perform as a dancer, which is which is one of the reasons why I actually stand when I speak. And 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 dance sometimes. I and I and I kind of just started exploring these avenues. And one of the things I did, which I highly recommend, is if you are interested and getting started with technology or open source, you just want to explore. And especially these days is that conferences tend to put their talks online. And so I knew that there was this conference called DevConf uh, Czech Republic. And I went and checked it out because it was it was my job to find a new job. So I was just exploring all these options. And one of the things is I started uh, watching the different talks on DevConf. This was, uh, I want to say it was like 2016, 2015. It was a while ago. Um, yeah, exactly. DevConf.info slash CZ. And uh, Matt had like the Matt, Matthew. I don't know Matthew's <laughs> last name. Um, Matthew Miller. Thank you. Matthew Miller was looking for a diversity advisory council to find Fedora's diversity advisor. I remember his talk. Um, there was one point he was giving the talk and he was basically like, he goes, um, Fedora mostly looks like me. And that's not good. And I went, Ooh, I don't look like you. <laughs> and, and, and that was my, literally my first, uh, not my first introduction to Fedora because after all I worked for Red Hat, but 
there's there's kind of a long gap between Fedora and Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and I had been in the RHEL world for a long, long time. So I was just starting to come and explore Fedora and the open source world, because if you are over in support, if you're over in the enterprise product, you don't necessarily have that much time to actually explore open source things, which is sad, but it's starting to change over the past few years. This was a while ago. So I reach out to Matthew Miller. I'm like, hey, how can I help with that diversity advisor council? And he was like, great. And he sends me this article, which I posted on my blog yesterday, because it was like the first interaction I had with Fedora. It was this beautiful article that basically put Matthew Miller's reasons for wanting to start this. And, and I went, that's, that's, yes. So I signed up for the council and there were a few of us. I will admit that I don't remember everyone who was on that council, but I remember um, Tyler Golden was on there. And, uh, and just by joining this council and the process of us actually looking for someone and we found someone and they became the diversity advisor and, and wow, over the past six years, the language and the empathy around Fedora's community has just evolved in like, evolved beautifully uh just just by miss reaching out and saying hey fedora women's day it's actually fedora women's and non-binary day and i went oh thank you so cool there's been a lot more expansion in the past uh five years and that's beautiful it's it's necessary i still whenever someone asks me for an example of an open source community who treats, let me say this differently. People will come to me and they'll ask me, you know, I don't tech or I don't code. I'm not an engineer. Is there something I can do? And, and often I'm like, yes, of course, you know, obvi obviously I'm like, yes, of course, you know, you can, you can be a community manager, a developer advocate, but also you can write, you can, you can be a lawyer and you can market, you can advocate, you can help people get started. You can give feedback on the docs, um, all kinds of stuff. And one of the projects that I always bring up, I'm like, check out Fedora Project because there's a, there's a website that was specifically set up. I don't even know if it's still there. I should, probably should have checked this first. But it, it basically says, it, it's basically a random website a, a random generator that says, hey, would you like to do this for Fedora? And you could go, not my thing, or yes, definitely. And then it takes you to, uh, yes, what can I do for Fedora? Yes. God, I love that. I, it's, just, it's just brilliant because people who are intimidated by open source, especially by not being technical enough or thinking you're not technical enough because whew, that's not the case can go to what can i do for fedora.org and you can just look through all the different things that you can do for fedora now that said have i helped fedora since yes but in very subtle and different alternative ways i have earned my F cake badge, my cake badge twice. I want to say, Marie, you and I have got to get together for cake, maybe virtually soon, so I can earn it three times. I advocate on behalf of Fedora quite often. And <laughs> yes, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> there's a cake with the F cake. <laughs> that's so cool. I'm a huge fan of icing. By the way, I did not answer the uh, the cake poll because I can't just choose one. And also, like, if if you just said yes, 
as as the answer, then yeah, then then that would have been my favorite cake. Um, but I I'm still I'm still Fedora still has my heart, even though it's no longer my operating system, literally on my laptop, which is kind of sad. Um, there's actually a little bit of a push within Equinix Metal because we've hired enough Linux people who are using CentOS or Fedora on their systems or Debian um, or Ubuntu. And, and they're saying, no, we don't want to use Mac or Windows. We want to use our Linux. And so there's, there's a little bit of a rebellious group that's, you know, you might know some people involved in that. Um, but yeah, that's my Fedora story. Uh, let me know if I can help you in any way, because while I am technical, I do have engineering experience. I just finished a hackathon today, three hours ago, where I built a website <laughs> over a 48 hour period. It's fine. It's fine. Wow. It's fine. That's um, impressive. Even if you are <laughs> not technical, there's there's always spaces. There's always places to learn. So yeah. So I have something for you. This is my own personal cruise. You have cake. I have. I don't. Oh my gosh! I wish I could. You know what I've been imagining? Like being able to send flavors or smells to people. Oh my god! Because of like COVID, like yes. one of the things I like to do is like cook for people. So it's like I can't do that and like part of that is yeah. like the sense the smells yeah. and the sensations anyway yeah i just got off track what was i going to say <laughs> you said you have something for me i do have something for you let me think of, let me think on that like one second because i i totally got off track by thinking of Well, I guess I have a different question. I'll probably think of the other one before. I have other questions I thought of while you were talking. Um, so I I came up with this series with the help of the DNI team, the Women and Non-Binary Folks in Fedora. And previously to this year, it has been Fedora Women's Day. Um, and yeah. there was not an inclusion, uh, specific inclusion of non-binary folks. So this year we we decided to go for that. And I'm excited about it. The DNI team is excited about it. And I see you here excited about it. But just to yeah. be frank, we we only had one submission, and that was your submission. So mm -hmm. part of me says, okay, one in fourteen is maybe not that one in thirteen, whatever it might be, is not horrible, yeah, yeah. but it's not good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I guess what I want to ask is like, how can how can Fedora be more welcoming to non-binary people? Or I have a feeling that they exist in our community, but aren't necessarily willing to speak up. So how can we yeah. either um, make our community more welcoming to non-binary people, or if they're already here, how are, can we? help them to raise their voices? So something that I, you know, qualify, 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 I can't speak for on behalf of an entire group of people, but I will say my experience. And um, I have noticed that there are a huge percentage of non-binary people in the community management world, especially around tech, which I think is it's incredible. But I but I have noticed that within tech, um, that that people people who are non-binary tend to be quiet in the sense that it's hard, especially in tech um to have a target on your back for any reason to be born with a uterus and then to say you're non-binary is very difficult in tech or to be born um, with a, a penis and to feel non-binary it's probably also really challenging 
probably, but I'm not going to assume. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, I think that there's some amount of, okay, well, that's a whole different topic. Go ahead. Yeah. And it, it, it's, I think also though, like non-binary and trans people are just, we're just starting to have safe spaces at all. And, and it's so new for all of us that like, I knew, <laughs> I knew that I was non-binary uh, when I was like, how long ago was this? This was, this was in my early twenties, late teens. And it was because, um, I was, I was in a LARP, which is live action role play. If you, if you don't know what a LARP is, it's, uh, where you actually do the game. And, and I had been in the LARP for a while and one of, I was on plot and one of my other plot people, they came up to me and they go, Hey, I'm writing a, a plot line about this character that is so ancient and so powerful and so old that they have evolved past gender. And so I need someone who's a little bit genderless to play someone for whom woman and man means nothing to them and like human like and I was like yeah no problem that sounds cool like that was my that was my external and on the inside I was like oh my god and I had to I was like am I an ancient one no I'm I'm non by like it wasn't until a couple of years ago when people started saying oh this is called non-binary and I was like oh yes now I have a word <laughs> I've got a word. This is my word. Um, and I didn't start really coming out of the closet until, um, you know, a couple of, until the word came about. So I think part of it is just, just figuring out that we're non-binary at all. And also okay. there's a certain, there are a lot of women who don't want to be women in tech. They just want to be engineers. And, and I get that. And I feel like it's, a, it's often the same for non-binary in tech or trans in tech. You just want to be your person. And I get it. I get it. The, the reason why I am screaming that I'm non-binary and that I'm screaming about mental illness and I'm screaming about, you know, in a polite, playful, warm way is because I know that there are people who aren't talking about these things who think it's a problem and it's not. And I want to inspire everyone to be playfully involved to their comfort level. And that's why I, like, as soon as Misk reached out, I was like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I, and then I admit, I completely forgot. Cause I, cause stuff, and you can go read my blog if you haven't stuff. Um, so, but I guess, but that's, I guess I'm kind of, what I'm taking from your um, response is that from here, since you, Y'all are just kind of figuring things out. Just inclusion. Inclusion. Yeah. Inclusion is yeah. exciting. Um, but, like, for example, if if you hadn't been able to present here today <laughs> and, you know, we were, it, it was something that we wanted to do, but we weren't able to do, you know, like, Sometimes you just like you want diversity to be there, but you don't know how to necessarily build it. Um, yeah. And the point that you make though about people not being quite ready makes a lot of sense to me, actually. And I thank you for your courage and your screams. Um, you know, I think it's important, and that's one of the reasons why I'm here too. You know, like my work in Fedora and becoming like a louder voice and a louder voice. <laughs> and, um, 
you know, the year before <laughs> I got this job, it was like, it was our contributor conference and I got on the stage and I basically gave everyone a talking to. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we need to be this and we need to be that. And like, um, you know, I came off the stage and someone was like, I knew, like, I knew when you gave like, that talk okay. that you would be like working for Fedora one day. And because I feel, yes. I feel really passionately about it. But beyond that, like, it's yeah. about um, slowly building the confidence to say those things um, out loud, not. And it's not something that I feel the need to do, but I'm bisexual and I am a woman. <laughs> I'm not, I, I identify as a woman, but I'm bisexual. And like, we don't have an LGBT group in, in Fedora. And I, I like, I'm like, I'm wondering if there's a community of people here who would want to, to kind of connect yep. on that level. Um, yeah, so there is. That, yeah, exactly. There is. Um, but it, it takes like someone like us who's motivated and has the confidence to take that first step and say, hey, we're going to do this thing because I think it's good. And it is yeah. good. And here we go. Yeah. So, yeah, very cool. It is. I'm also, um, I'm also, oh, yeah, like uh, I'm a lot more underrepresented groups but i'm passing in so many ways that um that i that i definitely am sometimes like am i ready to fight that hill yeah fuck it you know what? depends on <laughs> because, the day for example yeah exactly am I, how am i feeling uh i'm also um bisexual but I'm married to a man. And so it seems like I'm a, you know, straight. Uh, nope, nope. I gotta watch what I say with everybody. Uh, and I'm also a quarter Japanese. And so people will make Asian jokes, racist Asian jokes with me, thinking that I'm one of them. And I'm always like, mm, no, not okay. Stop it. Um, and it's, it's those hills that you're not ready to die on per se, but they're there. And if someone stomps on your hill, then you'll kick back. But yeah, right. I, I, it's, it's like the movie. If, if you build it, they will come. It's not always true, but in this case, it is one of those things that if you provide the community, if you are vocal about your acceptance and your inclusion, it will happen. This is the first year that you've rebranded, right? And Miss it was, came out. It's not even a full rebrand. We we're like, let's make a series. See? Let's make a series yeah. and see if we can get you know some interest. And 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 I think yeah. we do. You coming here shows that we do. Um, and continuing yeah. on and rebranding, we're actually thinking about rebranding it to Fedora Week of Diversity. So <gasps> it would still be. It would still be FWD. Instead, it would be a week, yeah. and it could involve a lot more different groups of people. So, yes, I, yes, that is not approved. <laughs> that is not approved by any means. I approve. You're welcome. Done. <laughs> Definitely has to go through the DNI team, and we got to work on <laughs> rebuilding it in a way where everyone's gonna like be Absolutely. real excited about it. But um, yeah, they've been wanting to break out of just this specific one, but this was a really good place for us to start because Definitely. women make up 50% of the population and we have 10% women or something. I think it's 15% now maybe we're like, and, and you're not, this isn't the group that's done this where they're, they went from a women's focus group within like OpenStack did the same thing where they went from being a women's group within OpenStack to being a diversity group within OpenStack. And I think it's beautiful. You can still empower women and all the rest of us UGs, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah. So I have a question, a personal kind of personal question. You said you moved to the Netherlands 10 years ago. Where were you before that? Everywhere in the States. 
Okay. So, so I've lived yes. in 13 states in the U S and, uh, because my mom, my mom and her father were both military. And so my, so my mom grew up moving around all over the world. And then, so when she started, when she became an adult, she just started moving very easily to different places for job opportunities and whatnot, and eventually went back to the Air Force. So I usually say it's military, even though the first 13 years was just because she felt like it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I've lived in 13 states in the U.S. That's impressive. Which was your favorite? Mm -hmm. It's a tie. Don't judge me. It's a tie between Oregon and Texas. And here's and there. If if you know if you're from the U.S., you're kind of like work. But if you're not from the U.S., it's because of Oregon and Texas, I was at those two states in very beautiful points in my life and built exceptional memories. I was never old enough to vote or, <laughs> or anything else around being an adult in those two places. But, but yeah, incredible memories. Um, it's one of the reasons why when, because Rain isn't actually my birth name. It's a name that I got when I started dancing and and I kept it and I, I used it for 20 years. And then when I got married, I legally changed my name. So now it is my legal name. But one of the reasons I love rain so much is because of Oregon. And uh, and the Netherlands rains way, way more than that. And I almost stopped. Like, that first winter was kind of sketch. I was like, we're going to, we're, this is not working out, but I don't know. But, yeah. I'm, I'm in Rochester, New York, right on the um, Lake Ontario and we get lake effect and I, it's like gray all the time, raining all the time. It's kind of like Seattle weather a little bit. But like yeah. colder yeah. and our winters are intense with lots of snow and ice. So good times. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. So to answer the question that you had before the talk, which was how has COVID um, changed? Um, I think it's not fair t for me because I was with Red Hat until May, the end of May. And at June, I started with this new company. And Aquinix Metal, um, they were doing a rebrand. They had just been acquired. They didn't have a developer relations group employee until March of this year. And then from March to August, we hired 26 people, 24 people, right? I've never seen anything like it in my life. Like if I had a million dollars and could build, like if I had my own company and could like build and was like, I've decided we're going to do developer relations. The, the department that Equinix Metal has is, is what I would do. And so it blows my mind that someone went, oh, that's a good idea. Let's do it. <laughs> cool. Cool. So cool. So you're transitioning into a new job so you don't feel like you can judge that well. No, it, like the COVID difference has, has been with the community has been, uh, it's difficult to say because it's only been COVID with the community and the community is so young and chaotic and, and uh, like there's, there's thousands of people, but it's, it hasn't had a program of outreach, gotcha. an official program of, of, at all. And so that's something that's, we're implementing all these programs and Interesting. It's all well, just building up. Yeah. Best of luck. 
<laughs> and I'm glad that you haven't, um, I'm glad that you haven't been feeling that in your job, at least. And you yeah. might be feeling it other places, yeah. <laughs> but not necessarily <laughs> there. Um, okay, so one of the things that we're doing at Fedora Women's Day this year is we're making some content to chop up later and make some trailers and stuff like that. And um, we wrote this script. So the first part is um, you'll say the whole thing except for the example part. That's that's me. Um, and then so how we're actually doing it is having people speak the first part in their native language. And then the Ooh. second part in, in English. But I found out today you're a native English speaker. So go ahead and speak. I can, I can say all of that in Dutch, though. Do you as want well. to say so it in I Dutch? We would love that. Sure. Okay, so yeah. go ahead. I will. Go ahead. Okay. Um, hello, my name is Rein. Reichen in Engels, toch? I am from I am from Groningen, um, bijna. Vandaag in u grande staten. I am oh, wat am ik? Uh, ik ben non-binary. Omdat het is heel nieuwe van de Nederlands. Uh, mijn pronouns zijn de dem. And I ik spreek Nederlands en Engels en een beetje Japans van mijn oma. <laughs> ik ook. Begrijp uh, Duits en Spaans en ja, veel andere, maar in Nederlands en Engels is mijn uh, eerste taal. <laughs> and then the rest in Engels, in, in Engels. So now I'm in Dutch mode. <laughs> We are from different countries. We speak different languages. We are of different cultures, but Fedora unites us with open source. Oh, it's so true. Thank you so oh, much. Really? I honestly You're haven't welcome. heard that much Dutch spoken in real life. <laughs> so that was actually very interesting for me. I was like, it was almost like kind of like had some mashup of English words in there or you were throwing in yes. English words. Yes. So is that so part of Dutch binaries. language? Yeah, exactly. First of all, um, there's a language uh, right next to Dutch called Frisian. And Frisian is the closest to English in the world. And so English, Frisian, Dutch, it's it's very close. And then also Dutch kind of steals from French and German and and English as well. And so you'll hear it's like your ear is drunk. Like if you could just squint slightly, you would understand it, but you're not quite. I honestly was not sure. Like if at some <laughs> points you were like transitioning back to English and I was like, Okay, no, 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 we're still in Dutch. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that, but that was really cool. Um, uh, yeah. I just want to say thanks again for being here. I don't see any other questions in the chat, but um, I'm Although so excited. that I should be dancing instead of. Yeah, the chat I, won't I really be on YouTube, have. so I think we should say Rain's native language is dance. So the logical conclusion is to dance the text rather than speak it. It's just. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just wanted to say thanks for taking time on your Saturday um, after thanks hack fests and all that. And I'm really glad that like you and I could connect uh, again. It's yeah. been a while and I hope to see you in real life one day and hopefully get a hug. Yes, at DevConf in a year, I'm sure. Yes, yeah. So yeah. keep on being that strong, awesome, loud, screaming, non-binary person that you are. <laughs> and <Thank you. laughs> I will see you soon. And everyone else, another session in 10 minutes. Bye, guys. Bye.